So on your disk that comes with your camera, you'll have the GX Capture T software. You can also download this from the website gtvision.co.uk. The um, symbol on your desktop will look like this. So if we just double click on that, it should open up the software. Okay, and you'll get a blank screen. In the top left corner over here, you'll you should see your camera listed. So I've got the GX Cam U3 Pro 12, which means that's the 12 megapixel resolution version. And if we just click on that, that should bring up the live image. There we go. So I've just got some moss under the microscope. And just for your information, I'm using this on an ultra zoom free stereo microscope. The first thing I want to bring to your attention is the resolution of the live image and the captured image. So as you can see here, because this is 12 megapixels, quite large, so it's 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. And these two are actually independent of each other. So if I just move the zoom on the microscope, you'll notice that there's a bit of a lag there. You can see it jolting slightly. Uh, that's actually a slight time delay because of the digital image and it's at full resolution. But if we just bring this down the resolution by clicking on this button here, you should see the image will change slightly, but it should speed up the frame rate. So there, that's much smoother now. It doesn't affect the captured image resolution. So if you're struggling with the speed of the image, just lower the re resolution of the live image there. So I'm just going to put that back at maximum because it looks the nicest. Okay, next thing I want to bring to your attention is the white balance. So here, you'll see there's a white balance and it, there's a little button there with a couple of arrows. And if you click that, that should open up the white balance functions there. And you'll see that a red box has appeared on our screen. So um, this region within the box is where it's going to do a white balance. So you want that to be on a white part of your sample. So the background here is actually white. And then you hit white balance. If you haven't got a, a white part on your sample, you can just put a piece of paper under your microscope, obviously a white piece of paper, and then do a white balance on that and then put your sample back under again. And that should then tweak the um, colors for your image. And you see here, this is much more realistic. Um, uh, color representation. So if we close that again, then the white balance box should disappear. See over here. The next thing to bring to your attention is the exposure and the gain control. So again, if we click on this, it will open up the exposure and gain. So automatically, I believe it's actually set to auto exposure, which you can see in this instance has actually overexposed it quite a bit. So if we again drag the white box along here onto a relevant part of the sample, it will adjust the exposure accordingly. So obviously that was a very white bit there, so it's going to um, massively underexpose it. And then if I bring it over here, that's a bit better. But you can also tweak this manually. So if I untick the auto exposure, you've got the exposure time adjustment here. So I think that's still slightly overexposed. So if I bring that down, that should then make the image a little bit darker and a bit better. You'll notice underneath it has the gain control. Now you want this to be as low as possible, ideally on 0%. The more gain you have, the noisier the image. So it will brighten the image and it is one way to brighten the image if you need to keep the exposure level down. Um, but just bear in mind that the image does become more noisy. The exposure level of the camera also affects the frame rate of the image. Um, so whereas I mentioned previously, you can adjust the live image resolution to increase the speed, decreasing the exposure will also help to increase the speed. So ideally you want as much light as possible through to the microscope, mine's currently on maximum already, in order to keep the exposure level of the camera down as much as possible to help keep the image nice and fast. I'm just going to bring that back up a bit. 
There we go. Okay, so next thing is the histogram. Again, that might be minimized. So down here in your controls, uh, if you click on the two arrows, that will open up a histogram adjustment. Now this, in the histogram, if you play about, if you see just on the end of the graph here, you'll get two arrows pointing either way. If you click on that and drag it, you see there's all this empty information around here, this part from about here onwards, there's no information on it. And dragging this bar down here will help to increase the dynamic range of the image. So if I let go now, you'll see the image has adjusted slightly. Um, I think if I put this down, that's too much. So let's just uh, do it to there. And again, I'll just show you, so without the adjustment, with the adjustment this can sometimes have a massive impact on the um on what the image looks like so it's definitely worth having a play about with that graph and just dragging along this bar down, down here the final thing is the sharpen tool so if we open up the sharpen tool here you'll see it's at zero percent currently if you find that your image is quite grainy um, that can also be because of the sharpen tool if it's not the gain that we talked about earlier and um, so if i increase the sharpen here you should see it just starting to get a little bit more grainy so my recommendation is to keep the sharpen either off completely or down quite low that's down to personal preference Okay, and that's all the um, main features that I wanted to bring to your attention today. There are some other uh, features in the software as well, but they will require their own tutorials to go through. But just to um, let you know what other things you can do in the software, if you go to the process tab, there's a, a stitch function. So you can uh, stitch one large image together. So if you've got, for example, a slide under the microscope, and obviously you can't view the whole slide in, in one field of view, you can stitch the image and it, you can then create one image that's the, the entire sample. The second thing is image stacking, which is really helpful in particular if you're using a stereo microscope um, and you're looking at a sample that's got some depth to it. So this is a good example that I've got up on here. Um, if I just adjust the focus. OK, so you see, yes, of course, I have a slight delay. Let's just lower the resolution, speed it up a bit for you. So you can see now the bottom of the sample is just starting to come into focus. And if I keep going, you'll go through the sample up to the top part that's now in focus. Uh, using the image stacking tool, you'll be able to get one image of the entire depth of the sample that's all in focus at one time. And that's it for today.